All right. Hey guys, and welcome to this episode where we're going to talk about the importance of self-compassion in, especially in the context of OCD and anxiety recovery, because so often what, what I see happen, and I'm completely guilty of this myself, is that we'll have a onset of symptoms or, you know, a spike or, you know, just a hard, maybe a couple of days or week. And then we'll add to it by beating ourselves up and judging ourselves for that experience. And, and really it only ends up perpetuating um, the, the stress of the situation and, and actually like kind of making it worse. And so for those of you that don't know me real quick, my name is Matt Cotty and I'm a licensed clinical social worker and the founder of Restored Minds. And on this episode, you know, I, I wanted to talk about self-compassion because I think it's just the one of the hardest things to give ourselves. And, you know, as a, you know, I, I for those of you that um, are part of the the email list, like the one tip I sent out last, last week was just, you know, just be nice to yourself, right? Just be nice to yourself. And that's a real hard thing to do, right? Um, I, I think, I think one of the things that happens is especially with just the fast pace we live in, um, the social media just being bombarded with information, there's always this constant state of judgment that we are just practicing, practicing, judging, 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 right? This is good. This is bad. I like this. I don't like this. And because we're judging all the time, you know, and, and, it, and it's just something that we just get caught up in, right? Because we're judging all the time, then eventually we start to impose that on ourselves with self-judgment. And, you know, it's, it's hard because with OCD and anxiety and stress related conditions, I mean, when we're talking about just like, you know, experiencing high levels of stress, things like depression, you know, even episodes of panic, when you're experiencing something like that, it's, it's a tough, tough time, you know, I mean, it's just, it's draining, it's exhausting. And what happens is, is that, I mean, I don't, I don't know one person. I've never worked with one person that that says they chose this to happen, right? It kind of just happens because you know whether you're not taking the time to um, de-stress your body, or you know if you're not, or if you're just operating in a way where you're feeding that loop and feeding that loop, especially with mental behaviors. Um, eventually, like, you know stress stress really when it when it really reaches the surface and and really starts to build i mean it, it becomes very difficult um to just manage kind of day-to-day -day life and and i and i know this personally right you know I, and and i have had several times in my life where it's just like been burning the candle at both ends or you know get got caught in the loop and then all of a sudden it's like okay i and i notice uh, you know i'm feeling down, I'm feeling stressed, I'm feeling anxiety, and you know, it's like impacting my sleep. And and the last the last thing I want to do is be compassionate to myself. And so if anything, this message is uh is just something I need to hear too on a on a day-to-day -day basis. Just that idea of 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 self-compassion, saying, hey, you know, it's okay that you're experiencing this. It's okay that you know, you're having a tough day. It's okay. You're having a tough week, you know, or, or however long it's been month, year, you know, it, it's, it's okay. Um, now I'm going to insert a little bit of a, a, an asterisk there, a caveat. Like if you're not doing anything to change the things you can change, well, then you can't expect the results to change. Okay. So there, there is this element of saying, Hey, you got to take responsibility and control of the things that you, um, if, if you are, um, if you're not taking control of the things you need to take care of to really break yourself out of the loop, then that's something that you need to start doing. But when it comes to feeling the anxiety, having the intrusive thoughts, having the racing thoughts, having this bodily experience. One of the best things you can do is learn to be self-compassionate and give yourself the space and time to feel it. And it actually, that will actually help the recovery process because 
it's it's a it's a thing where our judgment of the discomfort and our judgment of the quote negative feelings i'll say negative feelings even though i don't particularly like that terminology just because anxiety is just a a thing right it's it's an experience it's an energetic state that that we can experience as humans but when we give ourselves permission space to actually feel the discomfort and to be aware of it not judging it okay not judging it because if we judge it we're going to judge it as bad and then try to get rid of it and then that actually will prevent us from feeling it you know and and that's one of the most important things with anxiety right it's just that idea of just allowing it to surface in your body allowing it to pass when it's ready knowing that it can't stay there forever and if you do that that actually that actually is what allows the healing process to to you know essentially work is that our bodies know what to do you know and and self compassion is important because if you're having that experience it can be tempting to try to get yourself out of the experience to say hey i need to heal i need to get this done we need to really expedite this cuz i need to get back to the rat race i need to get back to work i need to get back to carpool and all the other responsibilities and like yeah it's true you know like i i totally get that yeah i totally feel that because anytime i'm feeling run down or just kind of like even this weekend i just was kind of just in a just in a lower state i was just tired i was just tired and for me one of the hardest things to do is say hey you know matt like you you need to rest you know you you need to you need to take care of yourself you need like because that's exactly what i would tell other people to do that's exactly what i tell my friends to do any my family any of my um clients i'd be like hey man rest but it's for some reason it's very hard to tell ourselves that it's very hard to listen to that kind of advice we hold ourselves to these unrealistic expectations and we and then we judge our experience and we're always trying to be a certain way as opposed to embracing how we are now the reason i bring this up this week is just because it's an important message to anchor into would you talk to your friends or family how you talk to yourself if they were dealing what you were dealing with you know for those that are really in it right now really struggling with the thoughts really deep into the you know that loop if if someone else was experiencing what you would experience would you talk to them and judge them the way you do yourself and almost always the answer is no you probably have so much more compassion for them you know in fact, it's it's so weird because it's like oftentimes uh, people that I work with that are that are really struggling that always talk about how compassionate they are towards others uh, and and thoughtful they are of others even in the midst of their own struggle and and yet can't display that compassion to themselves and so I want to talk about what that might look like and and some just practical things we can do right because compassion is really we're going to communicate our compassion ourselves to our behavior sure these thoughts might come up and sure these you know the desires to get rid of the anxiety and thoughts might be there but what you do is really again is solidifying the belief and so first off is when it comes to self-compassion we got to start with the idea that your worth as a person is never in question it's just an inherent it's there right whether you're feeling good or whether you're feeling bad whether you're feeling angry or sad you know it's like it's there right your worth is never in question it's not contingent on something because if you make your worth contingent on something then you're always going to have to have that thing to feel worthy and because that's true then we have to start treating ourselves like we're a person of worth even when we don't feel like it okay even when we don't feel like it so one of that one of the, those things is saying hey if you're really stressed out and you're you know really run down maybe not holding yourself to the standard that you would hold yourself to if you were feeling normal or you're feeling healthy like maybe that means you know a midday nap if you need it maybe that means saying no to going to to that event right because it's just like no I don't I don't want to do that you know 
in, in what we do is, is we try to live like the exact same way as, as if we were healthy. And we try to do that while we're experiencing all these, these symptomologies. And, and the reality is that's just, that's unsustainable because we're, we're burning too much at that point. So self-compassion involves giving yourself the space you need to feel what needs to be felt to heal the time you need to heal what needs to be healed and, and trusting that your body knows how to do that and giving your body the time and space it needs. That's, that's in my idea, what self-compassion is, is to say, Hey, you, you deserve this. You deserve rest. You deserve this time. You deserve this space. You deserve to heal. You deserve, if you need to take some time, do it. You know, that's a demonstration to yourself to say, look, like I, I'm, I'm important too. What a lot of people do is they just prioritize everyone over themselves and, and just try to like muscle on and put your head down and keep going. And it's like, no, like self-compassion is, is important. Eating well, that's a demonstration of self-compassion. See, a lot of people think self-compassion is like, well, I deserve this and I deserve, no, it's like treating yourself like you would a best friend, right? It's like if, if like your body feeding it with good fuel, right? Getting that salad, you know, in, instead of the pasta course, um, water and bump broth, right? You know, inst instead of alcohol. When we're engaging in the temporary indulgence, we're engaging in something to essentially avoid and, and, and not experience <clears throat> an emotion or, um, you know, something that we don't want to experience. That's a lot of what those temporary behaviors like, like alcohol, food, gambling, you know, all, all that stuff. I mean, it, it's, it acts as an avoidance or a distraction. So feeding and fueling yourself with the good stuff that that's actually going to like promote that healing process in your body is great. Doing things that involve self-care that might mean booking a massage. It might mean getting acupuncture. It might mean, you know, it's like going for that walk, you know, these are ways of self-compassion and they're so simple. They're so simple, but when you do them, you're demonstrating to yourself that hey, I matter and I, I'm worthy of, of good health and I, and I deserve to heal. See, if you don't do this stuff, you're, you're like telling yourself like, no, no, you don't, you don't deserve that. Other people can do that. Not you. What you do matters. Okay. And, and finally, like another good self-compassion thing that's very simple is just a deep cleaning of your body, right? I mean, like a really good cleaning in the morning where, um, because, because a lot of times with high stress, high anxiety, grooming is one of those things that kind of gets tossed out. So really grooming yourself and, and, uh, and cleaning, like, you know, scrubbing your, your skin and, and like saying, Hey, like, cause you're demonstrating, look like I'm, I'm worthy of a good cleaning. See what you do is going to communicate essentially to your subconscious, right? Like what you really believe and you're aligning with that belief that you're worthy and that you care about yourself. And because these are the things that you would probably tell your friend to do, but most likely not do yourself if you're like me. Um, and what we need to do is we need to start doing the things that we would tell other people to do and, and demonstrating that self-compassion to ourselves. So hopefully that makes sense. And that's, that's helpful in this context. And if you're really in it right now, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, like this week, today is a perfect place to start, you know, and it doesn't need to be a lot, just, just enough, just enough to show yourself that. And then, um, so for those of you that are, you know, also looking for support and guidance on um, OCD and anxiety recovery over at Restored Minds. We have some links right down in the notes. We have some resources for you, whether it's our, you know, free guide as to all the way to our, you know, coaching programs and our online course. And we have the resources that, that you need to be successful in this journey. And so if you haven't checked that out yet, please click the little link below. You'll be taken to a place where you can download the guide and get started instantly. Again, it's free. And then you can also, um, yeah, look at our, our additional programs to help support you. Because, again, part of self-compassion, too, I think, is actually um, is, is getting help. That's a, it's such a self-compassion thing. It's saying, like, I'm worth I'm worth getting help. I'm worth getting guidance and, and demonstrating that to yourself is, is important, right? Cause that, that, that actually is, is a huge act of self-compassion is, is asking for help and asking for assistance 
instead of just wearing it all yourself. And so um, I, I think that that's another great display of self-compassion. So anyways, hope you guys have a great week and, um, and, I, and I hope this was helpful. And with that said, I'll see you guys on the next episode where we're going to dive into some more topics on OCD and anxiety recovery. Take care. Thank you so much for watching that video. And so if you're struggling with OCD and anxiety, I just wanted to let you know that we have a free training for you um, over at Restored Minds where you can start learning how to use our AAA response to really break out of that loop and ultimately take back control of your life. And all you need to do to get access is just click the little link below and you'll be taken to a page where you can register today. Thank you so much.